war zones, natural disasters, remote rescue operations. We're used to these types of environments where there are threats and you're not quite sure necessarily where those threats might come from. Meet the man who'll be watching the Olympics more closely than most and not for the athletics. Dan Richards runs Global Rescue, a private security firm that will provide additional security for the U.S. ski and snowboarding team in Sochi. When it comes to information and intelligence, we actually have our own teams of, of intel analysts uh, located in our operation centers here in the United States and, and some of our other global locations. And they're constantly feeding us information. Global Rescue has had people on the ground gathering intelligence in Sochi for months. They include former Navy SEALs and Army Rangers trained and dispatched from this command center in Boston. The strength of our guys on the ground is for them to be able to see multiple options simultaneously and immediately, right? And understand what, what the, the spectrum of capability they bring. How do you get everybody together? How do you communicate? You know, what are, what are your options? The U.S. ski and snowboarding team will compete here at the Krasnaya Polyana Ski Resort in Sochi, an area with sparse, narrow roads and rugged terrain. So does that make, you know, evacuating the U.S. ski team from an area particularly challenging? Well, anytime you have a limitation on um, entry and egress points, it definitely presents um, a level of challenge. But how much can a private security firm really do in the event of an attack? In our city, for example, if we have an incident, the first thing they do, they close the bridges and the tunnels. The same thing's going to happen over there. They're going to lock it down. No private security firm is going to walk in there and suddenly have them abandon their, their procedures. Global Rescue admits that while the Russians are in charge, their value lies in providing an extra layer of protection, especially when the athletes are traveling to and from the games. If you're on the outside, you're pretty much on your own, and that's unfortunately the reality of the situation. It's sort of but Richards points out there is a silver lining. This terror threat to the games, um, which should represent the world coming together in friendly athletic competition, is actually bringing us together in ways that we might not have expected. We're being forced to come together and unite to try and confront um, this threat uh, in, a, in, a, in a united way, which is, uh, which is interesting. Zane Asher, CNN, Boston.